Hello and welcome to Ruby's Classic Cooking. Today I'm going to make trifle. Now, you remember my very first video, if you haven't seen it, be sure and watch it. It's jelly roll and variations. Well, here's my jelly roll. If you want to see how to make this? Just watch my very first video. And today I'm making trifle. Now, first thing I'm going to be doing is making up my instant pudding. So I've got two packages of six serving instant pudding in here with six cups of milk, homogenized whole milk, just following the package instructions. And I've just beaten it up with my handy dandy handheld mixer for two minutes and it's already starting to set up. I had thought I was videotaping to tell you the truth, but apparently my laptop got unplugged and my battery was low and it stopped. So caught it just in time so I didn't waste my video. So anyway, I'll just eject these beaters here. Get these messy things out of here. And over here is my bowl of fruit. I have a mixture of green grapes and red strawberries. Two boxes, two one pound boxes of strawberries. <clears throat> and I also have two bananas, which now that I've got my pudding done, you don't want your bananas to turn black on you as they will oxidize in the air and they will turn brown on you. So I just wait till the last minute and I uh, peel them and I have my paring knife here. I'm just going to cut them up in slices. I've just taken my, my um, fruit, I washed it, hulled my strawberries and I have um, chopped them up into more bite-sized pieces. So they're a little bit more eater friendly than whole strawberries. So I'm just going to dump them right here, right into my bowl, right here. There you go, my bowl of pudding. And now, I'm going to take my, I need a, whoops, I need a spoon to stir that up with. So I'm going to stir those in there. And then I'm going to do my bananas. And once I have done my bananas, I dunk them under the pudding. And then they don't, um, they don't turn brown on you. Once they're sealed from the air, they will not oxidize on you. So here's a banana. I'll just take these little stringy bits off. Nobody wants to find that in the dessert. And I cut the ends off. That's sort of my, that's the cook's portion for later. And I just cut up into little circles, just like that. All into my trifle. And now I'm going to stir that on just little thin slices. So it spreads nicely through your trifle. Now, I'm just going to stir this in. See how easy this is? Now, if you like, you can just get sponge cake, and you can uh, and you can just chop that up into pieces, bite-sized cubes, and put that put your mix that in here, and you can uh, add blobs of raspberry jelly to it, or layers of raspberry jelly, whatever you like. But I like to use jelly roll, and I'm going to show you how decorative it looks once I've sliced it up. And put it in my this is my big top my big my big bowl for my trifle and I'm going to take my jelly roll I'm going to cut this into about 16 slices and then I'm going to put this fruit into my bowl if you like you can add some sherry or brandy or something to that cake now I made this jelly roll up yesterday the day before yesterday now because we're going to a big potluck tonight and I want to have a nice dessert. I said I'd bring a dessert, so everyone seems to love my trifle. And there we go. So here's my jelly roll. I guess you can see that. I'm just going to move that out of the way. There, now you can see my jelly roll here. I'm just going to slice this up. So 16 nice slices. And I just do it by eye. I just kind of go about every inch, three quarters of an inch. You can measure that if you want to, but I just, I, I've been doing this for so long, I just eyeball it. <laughs> so there you go. See how it slices up really nicely into nice slices. They don't have to be quite as thick as you would do them if you were going to serve it just as a piece of jelly roll. I cut them a little thinner so they go further because they are going to be providing the decoration inside my bowl. Now I could do this all in one day, but that's like... No, I think I'll spread this 
prep work out a bit into two days. Now I take the, the end pieces, you can see how beautiful they look, I'm going to put them in the bottom of my bowl, in my bowl over here where you can see what I'm doing. Oops, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just going to li start lining my bowl with the slices. And I might just turn my camera down here so you can see just what I'm doing. Because so I just kind of line these guys up. Try to put the pretty sides of my slices out because that's what's going to show once I get up the sides of my bowl here. And then I just oh, move my fruit over here. Move my bowl over here. See, see how it's taking shape in there? I'm just laying my slices in there, kind of like I'm building a little wall. <laughs> there we go. Just going to build my wall up the sides here. Of my bowl. Look around here. And when I'm done with the fruit and the cake, I'm going to um, ice the whole cake with a whole lot of whipped cream. And then I've saved aside some nice shaped red strawberries that I'm going to use on top of my cake to decorate it. And see, I just get my get my cake all up here. And there we go. Every time it turns out a little different because the cake is a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner. You know, but it's just, there you go. I have lined my bowl with my cake. I probably should have had another slice there, but in fact, I might just steal one out of the bottom where nobody's going to see it and put it right up there. I do that sometimes. A little bit of cheating going on here. <clears throat> Making the trifle with a few cheats here, right? There you go. So there's my there's my bowl all lined. And it's my jelly bowl. Oh, that looks like a little low too there. I'll put this one over here instead. Okay. And half of this piece up here to fill in that gap. There we are. Okay, good. Now we're good. Now, I'm going to, I have a friend who is celiac, so she can't have any cake. So I'm just going to take the, um, take some of it and put it in a small bowl over here that's just for filling. And um, so she can have some of that with some nice whipped cream on top of it. And that works. The strawberries over here. And I'm just going to take some of this out of here and put a nice portion in here. In fact, there's two ladies that are, uh, one may be there tomorrow night, and one may be there tonight, and one may not. So one will be there tonight, and one may not be. So I'm just going to put this aside so they can both share it. So I should really have said there are two friends of mine that <laughs> have wheat problems. So there's a bowl of just the filling. And I'm going to put some nice whipped cream on top of that. So now let's take this away because it's got a sticky cake on it. And now I will show you as I dump my fruit into the bowl. And I like to use lots of fruit when I'm doing this. In fact, I have some more grapes. If I don't think there's enough grapes in here, I'll add some more grapes to it. So. go. There is my trifle. All assembled in the bowl. And now, I'll just scrape the rest of the pudding out. In fact, if I think I've got too many strawberries to go on top, I may just add a few more inside here. Chop them up and put them inside here. And then I'm going to get out a liter of whipped cream, which is about a quart of whipped cream and I'm going to beat that up and I'm going to uh, put that on top. There we go. I'm not the greatest decorator in the universe so they're going to get pretty simple cut in half strawberries on top, <laughs> on top of this. And now I'm going to finish up my trifle. I whipped my whipping cream while I was away and there it is all ready to go see and it doesn't fall out of the bowl nice and stiffly whipped whipped cream have a good look at that 
That's almost, that's a full liter whipping cream, all ready to go on my trifle and on my separate bowl here. So I'm just going to dip in here, put a good generous amount on the top of this dessert over here, the gluten-free one, and, or at least wheat-free, for my wheat-sensitive friends, and I'm going to put of pieces of strawberry on here for them on top there we go i'm not a professional decorator there we go finished bowl of trifle for two there we go what do you think of that no cake in this one so i'll just pop my lid on over here and it is ready to travel see that's what i like about this bowl it has a nice lid i can just pop on it to, for traveling and the same with this bowl here it comes with a lovely lid to pop on my bowl when I'm traveling. So here's my trifle before I put on my whipped cream and here's my big bowl of whipped cream, <laughs> a full liter of whipped cream. So it really fills up the bowl. I didn't think you needed to watch me whip whipping cream because you've seen that before. I have my whipping cream video out there. And it's the same principle whether you're whipping a small amount of whipped cream or a large amount of whipped cream like this. I like to buy the one liter container of whipping cream or quart because it used to be when you bought the smaller one, you got half a liter or you got 500 grams, but you don't 500 liter, milliliters, but you don't anymore. Now you get 473. Well, you know what? If you buy two of those, you're short 52 milliliters. Now 52 milliliters, milliliters, sorry, doesn't sound like much, but you know what? That's nearly a quarter of a cup of whipped cream that they have shorted you. Because you can be sure, buying the smaller container, that you are paying more or less. So watch out for those little tricks that they pull. I mean, 473 may not sound like much, but when you start talking about almost a quarter of a cup, 52 milliliters of your of whipping cream that you paid for that you didn't get, you've been shorted. And I like to get what I paid for. Now the thing is, if you bought a container of whipping cream and then you didn't use it all, you can actually take that into your mixer like this or into the one with the handheld beater so that I use to whip up the, um, the pudding with, and you can make butter. You just keep beating this whipping cream until it turns into butter. And then when you've got fresh butter, you can add some sea salt to that and make your own salted butter. Or you can add, so add some salt to it to help, and it helps preserve it also. So you might add salt. But you can also add some fresh crushed garlic or chives or onion or onion flakes or whatever flavor you like and make your own herb butter. You know at the grocery store? They think that a quarter pound of that stuff is worth the same as a whole pound of butter. Yeah, true. Check it out for yourself. It's really another marketing ploy. And if you made your own fresh butter, well, you're not throwing away the whipping cream or wasting it. You've got it. You can use it for your own fresh butter. <laughs> if you wanted to make onion butter or garlic butter and you wanted to do garlic bread or you wanted to do garlic potatoes or whatever kind of flavor you really like, then you can just uh, put that into your butter, have it in your freezer, cut off medallions of that into your, onto whatever you're doing, and you've got lovely garlic bread or herbs de Provence or whatever you like, chili butter, whatever you happen to like for your flavored butter. And it's not going to cost you the same amount of money it's going to cost you if you went out and bought it at the grocery store. If you already have the whipping cream in your fridge, then you can easily turn it into flavored butter. I know there are people who sell these hand pump things that you can make butter with, but you know what? That's why electricity was invented. And use your stand mixer or your, or your handheld mixer to do that. Use electricity. Maybe you'll appreciate it more if you do it by hand, I don't know. But personally, I was gonna, and I have to make butter myself, so I've just read about how easy it is to do. So one of these days I'm gonna try it when I have some leftover whipped cream. Now, I'm just going to decorate the top of my cake 
with some of my leftover strawberry halves here. I'm going to save these. I'm just going to arrange these in a little circle here. And there's lots of fruit underneath it here. I'm just going to put these on here. And maybe I'll put a nice big one in the middle. There we go. There. How does that look? <laughs> and my dessert is all finished and ready to go to my potluck tonight. And I hope, and I know everybody's going to enjoy it. That's about serving, so about 20 people. And I know there's going to be other desserts here tonight, so that's fine. I'll have some to bring home. My husband and I will enjoy the leftovers tomorrow. But in about two hours, I'm going off to a lovely turkey and ham dinner and uh, all the trimmings. And this is going to be one of the desserts being served tonight. So I really hope you enjoy this recipe and we'll try it yourselves. Comment below if you try it and tell me how it turned out for you and what your family and friends liked, if they liked it. And you know, you can not, you can add any kind of fruit you like to this mixture. If you like, you know, if you like peaches and they're in season, if you like blueberries and they're in season, I mix all kinds of things like that in it. Sometimes I even use canned fruit cocktail or canned peaches or canned pears to go in it or pears, you know, fresh pears, anything you like. It mixes in and it makes a lovely, because you get these lovely fresh bite, uh, fresh fruit in with all of the lovely whipped cream, the cake, and your, um, and your instant pudding mixture. So I hope you enjoyed my video today and you'll subscribe and like my channel and like this video and uh, I hope, this, I hope you'll be watching me again next time I come with a new video on Ruby's Classic Cooking. Bye for now.